Hello, and welcome to part four in the series, Mini Lathe Projects. And today we're going to be working on some lathe fixturing on my mini lathe. Let's get into that. Like I said, we're going to be working on some fixturing. This is for a, a project that I'm working on that I'll be doing in my mini lathe, but I felt we needed some fixturing. And let me show you why I felt that way. The problem is if I was to hold on to a piece of material here, do all this work, the taper work and the radius, when I go to put the tapped hole in this end, there's nothing to grab onto because of the radius or the angle, I'm sorry. If I do it the other way and I put the tapped hole in first, there's nothing to grab on here to hold that. So I'm going to make a fixture. Okay, I showed you one drawing. I thought I'd show you another drawing of uh, how this fixture is going to be made. Fixtures that will be made out of white Delrin. I've got some stock. It's about an inch and an eighth diameter. And the part that's going to be held in it is going to be black Delrin, but we don't really care about that right now. Uh, let's take a quick look at this drawing and get into it. Let's do that. Okay, this is what the part looks like that we're making the fixture. It's a diameter that I'm going to be grabbing with the chuck. This is the shoulder, so I could take the fixture in and out of the chuck and have it repeat. And this is where, here, this is kind of corny, but uh, this is where the piece is going to bump up to. There's a counterbore here, a drill through and a counterbore to hold that part onto it. Okay, I think you get the idea with the fixture and the part that it's going to be holding. And, okay, like I said, this is the material. I need to cut off a piece about two inches long or so and uh, start machining it already. Let me show you a close-up of this, what I'm going to do first. This is what I'm going to do first. While I'm holding on on this side, which is longer, I'm going to turn this, I'm going to drill, and I'm going to counter bore. These sizes, 5 eighths to 3 quarter inch diameter, I don't need to hold that that close, just as long as it's smaller than the total OD which I need to bump up against the chuck. So let's get into that. First thing I want to do is set a dead stop for my one inch depth. There's my dead stop. And if I can find my, there it is, three sixteenths. I use a dead stop most all the time. It's like I said in other videos, I like to be able to manually, I usually manually rough stuff. I'm going to bring this in approximately one inch. Nothing is that important. I'm going to bring that down to between five eighths and three quarters of an inch. Let's do that. All right, I just take a quick cut on there, 
to start measuring and seeing where I'm at. It's one inch. Oh, 90. So let's see, 790, 890, 990, one inch 90. I need to take about 300 thousandths. I'm going to take it in 50 thousandths increments. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousandths. One hundred. One fifty. Two hundred. Two fifty. 300 thousandths. Okay, that's really a decent finish too. And the wall come out real nice. That's going to be pressed up against these chuck jaws when I turn it around. Okay, let's measure it and see where we're at. That's 790. And I want it to be between 5 8 and 750. So let's say I'm just going to take a hundred thousandths more and call it good. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, one hundred thousandths. Okay. I'm going to take about a 20,000 cut with the power feed, feed in a little bit more, and hit that wall, and then face it off. Let's see. We'll put that in another, say, 5,000. 10, 20. 'm across that face oh, that feels nice okay 90 that should be 670 somewhere around there it's 670 okay uh the next thing I need to do is drill through. Okay, I'm going to use a, a 1032 on there to go through. And the 1032 is approximately 3 sixteenths. This is 189, 188. Let's see, on the chart, 188, 189, a number 12. A number 11 drill is 191. You think I'd remember that stuff? A number 11 drill. Okay. Let's 
get this out of the way. Man, I love this update that I put on there. I remember every time I went to drill something, I had to get the wrench out, tighten it up, loosen it up. <laughs> anyway, I have about a one inch, 250 thousandths, about one and a quarter's worth of flute. So if I drill this all the way to the end of the flute, I know I'm approximately a uh, inch and a quarter. Let's do that. Um, I drilled all the way. I'm sorry. I drilled all the way to the end of the flute. I'm going to try to go a little bit further. I'm going to keep bringing that out and clearing the chips. But that way, after I turn it around and bring it to length, the hole should be there. We'll do it one more time. That should be approximately an inch and a half. I went about a quarter inch past the end of that flute. Now, we're going to put the counter bore in there. Let's put this drill away, and I need a five sixteenths. This was a number 11. Uh, a five sixteenths drill. Here we go. Three quarters of an inch deep. One of the things I've been always wanting to do <coughs> is put a, a digital gauge on my drill because I have no way to tell how far I'm going in. So what I'm going to have to do is measure from my chuck to the end of the, the housing here, tailstock housing. Right now the way it is, it's a half inch exactly. And if it's a half inch plus three quarters, half inch plus three quarters, that's an inch and a quarter. Let's do this. I brought that to an inch and a quarter. That should be deep enough. Let's go find an end mill. It didn't take too long. Three hundred twelve and a half, and I have about eight hundred thousands worth of flute here. So let's see how close that drill did. <laughs> so this is going to be cutting the idea on this also. That's okay. On where it's going to stop. But I should be able to feel it. Bump it up against there. Tighten it down. 
and start it up. Again, it'll be an inch and a quarter deep on my scale. Okay, that's an inch and a quarter. I felt the material being cut when I got down to about 725 or so. My last 30 seconds or so on the scale, I felt that. Okay, let's see what my depth mic is saying here. I have a burr here. Shouldn't be measuring over a burr. Okay, find a countersink. And. No file. That's better. The drill didn't leave a burr, really, but that end mill did. <sighs> well, my scale depth measurement <laughs> <laughs> I went 20 thousandths past it. Uh, it was 770. I could live with that. The head fits in there. And the screw fits into that through hole. But I can clean that up once I turn it around and take care of that. Okay, let's get on to the other side. Turn it around. I'm going to bring this to size right away. I have a lot to cut off of here. This is uh, three quarters of an inch left, and I only need a quarter inch. So I got a half inch to cut off of there. This is usually when I fling it out of the machine because I get in a hurry. Bring you back when I'm just about finished. There's my through hole. Okay, I just need to face this off first, and then I'll put my little step, and the diameter is going to be about three-eighths of an inch.
This again, the depth is not important. I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch. And that means this is going to end up that little bit of wall that I'm going to go up against here with is a It just hit me when I said that this needs to hit these jaws. It can't. This won't go in to the chuck any further. Because I said this diameter was not important. I said 5 eighths to 3 quarters, something like that. Well, let's see. I have a 5 eighths end mill. 5 eighths just makes it so while i still have something to grab onto i need to turn this down to maybe 620 it is important uh, i should do a little bit more checking <laughs> let's see where is my chuck key okay let me regroup here, and uh, we'll proceed. Okay, I'm back, and I think I know what I'm doing. Let's see. All right, I've got a piece of ground steel, and I'm going to place that behind my part. As such, take this. I had just faced this. Push that against my ground piece of steel. Tighten that up. Pull this out. Let's turn it on and see how good it turns. Looks pretty good. Uh, that was 670. This is 625, and it slid in there nice and snug. So I'm going to make that, let's see, 70, 670. If I take 60 thousandths, that will be uh, 610. That should pass. Let's, let's try to do this. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, chuck and then we can continue on it should go all the way against these jaws <laughs> and it does that's the way it's supposed to be okay let's continue on Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred, and ten, twenty, hundred and thirty.
Let's see where we're at with this. Now, I know this one doesn't matter as long as it's smaller than a half inch. Four hundred and seventy. That's smaller than a half inch. And I think this is finished. Let's see if that bolt goes through it. <laughs> see, I thought I knew what I was talking about when I said these dimensions don't matter. Well, sometimes they do. I need to do a little bit more planning, I guess. Let's see. Ah. It goes through there. That looks like it's going to work. Okay. So, the fixture is finished. I can move on with my other project, which I really haven't even started. I have to make four pieces. Uh, that's the whole reason why it needs this shoulder to be pushed up against here, is because when I take this out and change parts, I don't want to have to readjust where my angle is. I'll have the compound up against a dead stop, Take the part out, I'll put a new piece on the fixture, lock it in, and this should follow through. I just have to bring my Y axis uh, where it belongs. And everything should work out. But we'll see. That's a whole nother project. <laughs> so I think. Uh, this video has come to an end. So I'm going to call it a wrap. So until next time, enjoy. Enjoy.